but if anything this has been a good time for other people to join the other feeds anyway so it's not the end of the world um but it's still not working properly why would that be because i really want to do this and i want to do it for as many people as possible um because hopefully i've actually got something worthwhile to say <laughs> is part of the plan oh am i working end live video if you are on facebook can you let me know <laughs> Um, because there's no red like button anywhere, so I, I assume I'm working. Hello. So, if you have stayed with me during my little jabberings, um, those of you on Twitter in particular, because that seems to be going to anywhere, uh, my name's Tom, um, at Hello Tom Dyer. I am uh, an employee of a cancer charity. I am trying to do something different so we can all kind of um figure out what to do with ourselves now that we've got a lot of time indoors and what can we do oh god i need to put these cameras closer together for you because that's going to drive you insane um what we can all do to try and help ourselves and help each other and just to make sure that we're all looking after ourselves uh, mentally and a little bit physically um i'm in my little grotto as opposed to yesterday's um uh yesterday's video which was done in the office and um, so that's a little bit different um, because I'm I have helped people in the office help people affected by cancer and I feel very proud of myself for doing that so now it's my turn to do what needs to be done and that is to socially distance myself from everyone else I'm fortunate that where I work I can I can work from um, I can work from home can you see this video on Facebook let's see if we can get the masses talking over here now. Um, so that's now what I'm going to do. So I'm still trying to determine exactly what that's going to look like. I'm deliberately going to stay indoors as much as I can. I am going to be out and about trying to um, stay like remain healthy and um, physical exercise is really important. Someone who I follow on Twitter, Mark CBH, he um, was saying that things were spiraling around and he actually got out and went for a run earlier and he came back and even though he's still frustrated um, he feels so much better for having had the exercise so we need to pay attention to what, our, what we're thinking we need to pay attention to what we're doing and we need to carry on as much as possible and where you're able to with whatever your line of work was um, so my line of work is kind of this anyway so this is why i'm kind of bringing it to, to the masses and i watched the prime minister's uh, speech earlier and one thing that is being really impressed uh, by the medical experts on either side uh, of him on those podiums is the importance of social distancing and i won't be able to ex um, explain it very well but i did see a clip of will smith explaining it really well but it's to do with capacity of um, of the health services of the NHS in the UK and if we all just go out and we start bumping into each other and we start spreading this virus then what we're going to do is we're going to run out of beds um, so at the moment Will Smith used 40 so we've got 40 beds and at the moment you know typically on a standard day we've got 15 to 30 people so there's always a little bit of surplus so should there be something happens there's somewhere for people to go um, what happens if we all start bumping into each other and we're not socially distancing ourselves is that that number might go to 60 and that means that there's no ventilation beds there's nowhere for the critically ill to recover and get better under medical attention um, and that's really important but whereas if we stay distant and there's this brilliant brilliant uh, graphic going around about if we socially distance ourselves I think it's 70% and um, 2.5 people will still get infected but that's better than everybody getting infected by bumping into each other um, and that's that's really important that is really important because there are so many or there's so few beds um, for ventilation so a lot of people kind of they appear to be getting a bit confused in relation to um, well I'm not affected so it doesn't matter or I've got no symptoms so it doesn't necessarily matter forgetting that even if you do get mild symptoms and you might recover from it and the death number um, I can't remember how many new ones it was today, but Italy has gone up to 3,400 plus. Um, is that if we don't socially distance ourselves, then what we're doing is we're putting other people at, light, um, at risk because those that were critically ill but could have been cured with the right intervention 
are now in a situation where they literally can't get into the right situation for treatment because everyone's just bumming around each other. And yes, there's criticism from the government because they haven't closed anything in pubs and things like that, pubs and restaurants. But the the team effort of everything that's going on, it's brilliant that um, these organisations are doing it themselves, much to the detriment of um, of their businesses and of their employees. And I'm very much waiting with bated breath as to what the government are going to do for individuals. They've explained their business package, so that's very cool. Um, so. Apparently tomorrow they're going to talk about individuals and what's going to be available for them. Um, what I really want to talk about after the briefing that we had um, earlier from the Prime Minister is they think, based on nothing really, um, that 12 weeks, end of June, that we'll be over the hump and that we'll be able to um, re-evaluate and reassess what, what we're doing. Now, for most people, um, particularly those in the arts and the freelancers, so I like to call myself a bit of an actor, um, all of my projects um, have been cancelled. So that means that usually I would be out and about um, rehearsing. Mon um, last year I did my production, which meant that for the majority of the year I rehearsed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, twice on Sunday. Um, and that carried on since pretty much February through until October time, uh, October, November time. Um, all of those things have finished, they've dried up, and there are some people, or the majority of people in my network, that that's their work, that's their livelihood, that's gone. Um, I'm really hopeful that we'll be able to bandy around on this new internet community and actually support those people in line with whatever the government proposes to help individuals, um, which they said they were going to announce tomorrow. But that 12-week category that was mentioned uh, earlier is really interesting because Whereas before, we know that we're socially distancing ourselves, but we don't really know where we're going or what we're doing or how long this is for and uncertainty and fear and anxiety and all these different things that, that come as a result of the unknown and change, two great big clangers of things that are happening. Um, we've now got an opportunity to actually think about, right, I've now got a portion of time that I can think about. And I just want to kind of figure out exactly um, what it is that people are going to do with these with these um, with these twelve weeks? Um, I've kind of put my stall out there and said, right, I'm going to try and in, inspire inspire the nation with with my videos and my point of view and things that I've learned from uh, act and solution focus and advising people affected by cancer and just trying to do more and more of these things, trying and like energize thoughts and things like that. Um, so twelve weeks is a brilliant period of time because if there's something that you want to master or there's something that you want to learn or do if you've got the resources to do it online now is the perfect time to think right I have so many evenings where I'm going to be limited in my ability to go out and about there is no sport on pubs and restaurants are, are closing and um, what can I do to, to turn this insti like institutionalization into something that's beneficial for me going forward and um, so I'm very tempted to kind of get a piece of paper and say, right, we've got 12 weeks. What do you want to master in those 12 weeks? Do you want to master one particular thing uh, that you become a master at at the end of those 12 weeks? Or do you want to learn something new a, a week? Because of an evening, uh, you're looking at, so if you're working from home, so typically finish at five, you've got food, you've got like a good three or four hours in the evening before bedtime and movie time and all that lot. Um, so if you're looking at a standard week, so you've got uh, three, six, nine, 12, 15 hours. So 15 times 12, whatever that is, I'm not going to do quick maths <laughs> on camera because I'm getting it wrong. Um, then you might become really good at something. Or you might find things that you're not very good at, but you can keep trying new things. Um, and you can find the thing that you've always wanted to do um, and actually hone some time in on it. This is going to have obstacles if you are uh, uh, distancing with other people or particularly with children. But what a great time to be with your child and actually do the fun things that they want to do in the evening as opposed to, oh, I need to get ready for work tomorrow. Um, and you can take more time doing the things that you would normally do um, rushing around. It's like quick home from work, um, after school clubs, need to make a very quick meal, got to have food and then bedtime routine. All of these things now can be can be elongated and they can be done uh, with care, nurturing and uh, and support. Um, 
so we, we've had a, a, a question coming on Facebook. Um, so we can now do things far more deliberately, far more consciously, and in line with activated life and acceptance and commitment therapy, far more mindfully. And we can actually take the time to try and understand those around us and those in the wider world um, to actually appreciate who we are as beings and not just doings. Because um, it's very easy in this modern world to be a, a doer and not actually be a being. Um, so over these next 12 weeks, which is a long time, and everyone's going to go a little bit stir crazy, but we are allowed out, keep your, that minimum distance, and we'll be doing our NHS a world of good. Um, there's the great poster of them going around, which is, we're staying here to help you, you stay at home to help us. And that's brilliant. Um, let's have a look. So Clive on Facebook. So, ah, oh, brilliant. Um, so they're keeping away from the rest of humanity. We, we've done a week already. Don't think the three months have started yet. Um, no, so similar to you, Clive, I think that those weeks are starting now, pretty much. I think that uh, whatever's going to happen is happening from Monday, essentially. Uh, so the office that I work at tomorrow is our last working day. We've all got the capability to work from home now. So that's what we're going to be doing. However, um, we've moved all the books from the shed and I plan to learn a speech a week and work on my children's book. Uh, other plans seem to be on the back burner. Most plans are on the back burner, um, which is a shame. However, bringing all the books in, learning a speech a week, working on a children's book, that's something that's going to be amazing for, for future generations. The fact that you've now got the time and the focus to, to actually look at developing something which is going to aid people um, in, in the future, um, which is brilliant. Um, one thing that I've liked is a post, I miss you too, um, is a post that I've seen about children when it was announced the other day that schools were going to close, is it's very easy to fall into the panic and the worry of what's going to happen with the children and also with life in general. And I know that me and my sister are guilty of this and that most of the times we talk, we're talking about coronavirus and my niece is in the background, she's like, oh, you're talking about it again. Um, and what we don't necessarily want to do is to imprint negativity and fear and anger um, and all those other negative emotions for these young people that are going to end up um, living with these memories. Um, that's really worrying. That's, that's potentially quite quite damaging for, for their well-being going forward. And I think it's really important that um, in line with this post that I read that when we are home with our children, with our nieces and things like that, is that we are giving them support and that we're giving them a little bit of joy and that we're giving them some love um, which echoes a post from a, a couple of weeks ago which was um, oh, what was it? it was something to do with your children don't want a perfect mum they want a happy mum and this is the time more than ever that um, that people do need hello good um, and this is the time now that the younger generation can see the older generations bandying together um, to to realise that in the face of adversity we can come together, that we can still have joy, we can still have laughter, we can still learn and we can still be really beneficial to people. Um, so that's really important um, that, that we don't instill this fear of the world, of the globe as to what's going on. Uh, so I feel quite strongly about that. Um, and other silver linings of, of this um, is how the world is repairing itself. Um, my favourite is dolphin in um, in Venice, the swans and things like that. Um, how quick the world moves on, <laughs> this alone will, have, um, will be better after. I completely agree, so I was rich on Twitter, um, how the world quickly moves on. And... <laughs> and I genuinely believe that after all of this and when the planet has healed itself a little bit and we've all healed ourselves and we realise just how hierarchical our society is and how we don't necessarily have a grasp as to who's who in this world, that at the end of it there is going to be a kind of warmer global attitude towards each other and towards the planet and that can only be a good thing. Um, that's what I honestly believe and that's something which it's up to kind of all of us to carry on striving for, I suppose. Um, hopefully that's your bag. 
Um, but yes, I mentioned in the post which which shared this um, when I shared this about values and about goals and action. So. Um, what I've been talking about over the 12 weeks, they're very much goals. They're very much things that um, I want to start something at a particular date, I want to end them by a particular date, and I want to have achieved something in that time. I'm not going to promise you that you'll become a concert pianist if you've got a keyboard at home, um, but certainly you'll be able to play hopefully more than Blah Blah Black Sheep or Mary Had a Little Lamb. Um, but the, the goals are usually something for gratification, however, a value is something that we live by, and a value is something that you can't really put down to anything in particular. Uh, hello, Abigail. Um, uh, Paul, oh, I was talking about um, uh, fear and anger. Paul, uh, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering, and no one needs to suffer during these times. Oh, in fact, you've triggered something in my head about the difference between pain and suffering. Um, and the suffering is things that we add on to ourselves. So we're in a situation that is painful at the moment. However, for the majority of us, we're all still relatively healthy. We're all still able to do a lot of what we're doing. And it's the fear of something that might happen, which is causing um, lots of people added fear. And then it's an, an added part of, of, of what's going through, um, an added fear of the unknown, which might be increasing our suffering. So be wary of that. And if you do find yourself thinking of thoughts way off into the future um, very much think about it and be like oh I'm having this thought this isn't real yet this is something that I am forecasting this is a television program in my head and I don't need to think about this TV program thank you very much for giving me the preview to the future of my life however I'm going to stick with the here and now and I'm going to deal with the episode that I'm currently in so if you do find yourself forecasting away into the future don't increase your suffering um, by producing painful mental images and uh, bring it right back to I'm here in this room, I'm sat on this chair, I'm holding this bottle, I can feel my breath, I'm here, I'm sane, I'm calm, everything is, is okay. Um, and then quickly going back to values, um, I'll probably stop this around about 20 minutes unless other people have other questions for me. Um, hello Jane by the way, uh, and thank you Leanne and Carol who got back in touch earlier as well. Um, who we want to be and who we are can sometimes be, oh hello Ben, um, can sometimes be a little a bit different and if ever there was a time to sit back and take stock and consider who I am, who you are in this world and who you want to be going forward, what a brilliant time for some self-reflection you can put your forward, uh, that you can put yourself through now and it's not a time to beat yourself with a stick, it's a time for you to consider who do I want to be in this world, how do I want to contribute to, to the society that I'm living in, whether that's your family, whether that's your community, whether it's something a little bit larger, and now is the time to think about what is it that you really value in life. Um, things that I value are helping others, being kind to others, um, building other people up, and that's why I kind of wanted to do this. I've wanted to do it for the, this for a very, very long time. And in a way, I'm kind of kicking myself that it's taken... Oh, I've touched my face. <gasps> Don't touch your face. Um, that it's taken a global pandemic for me to start sharing the messages that I've wanted to share for a very long time. Um, and that's something that's really important to me is to is to share these things. Because if you watch my 10-minute videos that are on Facebook and on Instagram, I try and end all of them, if I don't run out of time, with um, you are extraordinary. And we all are, we're all extraordinary, we can all choose what it is that we want to do, and we can all choose the life that we want to lead and how we want to lead that life. Um, so I'm going to lead you, leave you with that message, that you can still choose the life that you want to lead, you can value kindness, you, you can value um, looking after this planet, you can value work ethic and things like that. Um, and really, I'll probably deep dive into that a bit more on another video, just so I'm clear on what it is that I'm trying to say. Um, and yeah, think about who you are, and more importantly, who you want to be, particularly during these times. It's been really touching that through technology, um, I mentioned, hello Ben, uh, he's talked to more people on um, through telephone calls than he would have done ordinarily. And reaching out and communicating with people, even those that you don't necessarily talk to regularly, is really, really important. Um, 
and I shared a thing on Twitter a couple of days ago, which was reach out to people, even if it feels really, really clunky, because we're not very good at asking for help. We're not very good at retaining that help. So if it's clunky, still do it, even if it's just a one line message that says, I know this is clunky, but we haven't talked for a while. How are you doing? How are you doing in the midst of all of this? Or if you don't want to talk about the midst of all of this coronavirus, um, just how are you doing generally? Um, then say that. Be really honest about it. Just be really, really honest and say, I don't really know what I'm doing or saying because this is really out of my comfort zone because I'm used to being there in person. But being honest about these things breaks that barrier straight away and it shows that there is no pretense. It's just you being you and caring about other people. Um, I care about all of you. Um, if you do want to talk to me, uh, get in touch. I'm at Hello Tom Dyer on pretty much everything. Well, no, I am on every social media platform that I'm on. Um, so please do get in touch if you need to. Hello, Jade. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know from my perspective from from work, whether that's my work over the last two years, whether that's the work from um, all the days gone by, um, whether that's legal advice working with people affected by cancer, um, please 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 get in touch i would love 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 to share my insights my experience with you particularly if it's going to help you um take care this video will be saved on my instagram for 24 hours i think it'll be saved on my facebook and um, if you found bits of it really interesting let me know and i'll hone in on them uh, but otherwise have the most brilliant evening um, i'm working from home tomorrow and i look forward to speaking to you tomorrow Take care. You are extraordinary. Love you, bye. Mwah. How do I end this one? Ask for share. How do I end you? Bye, Twitter. And bye bye, Instagram.